Welcome a former European champion, former match play champion, and a former champion of the world! It's Rob! The final game in Reds Bars, stage two of the UK Open this year. After this, it is all main stage action for the final day. The quarterfinals in the afternoon, the semis and the final in the evening. Rob Cross is a player who knows what it's like to be involved at that stage of the tournament, but so is Keen Barry. He reached the semi-finals of this a couple of years ago, and he's making a, a brilliant fist of defending that prize money. His standout performance in his run a couple of years ago was seeing off the former champion James Wade 10-4 in the quarterfinals. At this stage, he beat Rapid Ricky Evans by 10 legs to five. Rapid Ricky could await Keen Barry in the quarterfinals tomorrow. We've seen him win on this stage, but for that to happen, Keen Barry is going to have to overcome Rob Cross, who has arguably been the player of the tournament so far. He has only lost seven legs. A 10-3 demolition of Roby John Rodriguez with a solid 96-7 average. And then, perhaps the best display of the tournament, 105 average, a 10-4 walloping of his good mate Josh Rock. He's playing lovely stuff. Does that continue? It may just do. Because that resume you, is very first impressive. It's Rob to throw first. But there's a whole host of dots after those title wins because he wants more. He wants to add other things to his resume. He doesn't want to just be noted as a one-time world champion, a two-time European champion, and a match play champion. 100. He wants to join the likes of Wright and Price and Van Gerwen and others who have got other majors against their name. 58. And... He wants to be a winner at Minehead as well, because we have two majors a, a year here. And this has got history, this tournament. Being a UK Open champion can open so many doors. Just look at what it did for Peter Wright. Yeah, Peter Wright picked up his first major title here. 85. A number of players still in the tournament who are searching for a maiden major title. Even people who have gone on to be finalists have had really good times 100. of it in the next few years. Well, look, you can look through the history of this tournament and... 78. Yes, we've had a whole range of different combinations of players making the final. We've had surprising runs from, you know, not the biggest names in the game. You don't make the final of this unless you're really, really good. Correct. There, there is still a list of brilliant 60. darts players who've been challenging for the title in this tournament. I haven't asked you this all weekend, but... 58. With the exception of Andrew Gilding, because I know you were going to say this, what's your favourite UK Open story? Andrew Gilding reaching the semi-finals originally many years ago and only losing to Michael Van Gogh in a ridiculous game despite averaging 108. 100. Do you remember when Tony Ayres made the last four? No, don't actually. <laughs> it was in Bolton. That sadly lo no longer with us. But Tony Ayres, very good dart player in the south of England, and he made the semis out of nowhere. Rob Cross wants 84 here. So goes to 16s, now to the 18s. And now it'll be double seven. 
Joaquin Barry on 42 if he's allowed back to the board, but he is not. He's in a very ruthless mood, isn't he? Doesn't want to give any legs away. Maybe in the same sort of mood as Smash. They seem to have the same barber. Certainly do. We have seen some things on this board over the last couple of days. Can we finish with another special display? Rob Cross himself is, whenever Josh Rock was at just a superb performance. Martin Lutman, one of the great displays of finishing. We have seen incredible comebacks from the likes of Damon Hetter. But, you know, significant moments in players' careers, like Ricky Evans reaching the quarterfinals. But the, the bunting Dutes game, mismatch darts from Kevin Dutes, mismatch darts from Gerwin Price as he lost out to Martin Schindler. It has delivered once again stage two at the UK Open. It always a, does. That was a great climax last night with Schindler and Price. I think he might still be feeling shock, the Iceman, at this stage after losing that match 10-9. And on the main stage, I think Mervyn King might already be in a bit of trouble. He's staring 5-0 in the face. Humphrey's averaging over a ton again. 85. Over 105. Yeah, it turns out. The world champion world number one's quite good at darts, isn't he? 24. I think he's bothered about the fact that he's Robin not favoring for the title. He doesn't give one hoot. 140 for cross means only one thing. Six 18s and a 32. I'm astonished he didn't find the second treble there. 77. That wasn't very good. And I think the difference between Keane playing Ricky Evans two years ago and Rob Cross in this sort of form in the last 16, night and day. Well, it is quite interesting. I'll come to some recent meetings in a moment. Let's see if Rob Cross can make it 2-0 here. Well, that will certainly help. Double 12 for 2-0. I think that helps as well. Game Finds Johnson the double 12 for a 2 0 lead. Rob Cross like doing the business in the early stages Game here, but he has lost his last two games to Keen Barry, both on big stages in front of big crowds on the European tour, and in both cases, they were brilliant. Cross averaged over a ton in both matches and lost them both. 96. Now, Keen will be very well aware of this. He hadn't beaten Rob Cross leading up until that point, he lost all four games against him. But to beat him on a big stage back to back last year and do it with some brilliant performances and move through to the final days of European tours on both occasions, that is something he can cling on to. The problem is, Rob Cross is playing better now than he was at that point of last year. And also, this is a longer format which you would think. Rob Cross say, goes and averages 104 like he did against Keane Barry last time. Over a longer format game, that is going to is more likely to tell in the scoreline. Correct. He, he's a rep machine as Rob. The more reps he gets, and this is the benefit of the Premier League, in my opinion, for his chances of having a good season. That competitiveness on Thursday nights leading into European Tour events and things like this, I think is an ally to him. Whereas other people, it can be a hindrance because they can get tired. But I don't think Rob does. I think he's he's a rep machine. He puts in hard yards on the practice board when needed, but the Premier League allows him to take his foot off the gas practice-wise and use Nine Thursday nights as a gear to get to where he wants to be in ranking events. Yeah, and look, those Thursday nights are going all right for him. That final next day on Thursday night puts him up to third in the Premier League. Nine and that's level Robbie on points with Luke Litton. He's only behind him on, I think, it might be leg difference or legs one. This one's not going to go up. But you're starting to think that Keane's chances have to. Can you require 110? Great first start. How's his third? 94. Very well thrown. But like I said this afternoon, when Josh Rock was playing against Rob, you can't leave him on 36. You can't leave him on anything at the minute. Game Remorseless from Rob Cross. He is 3 0 up in this one. He has played 30 legs of darts in this tournament and he has won 23 of them. 96. We remarked before this game started about a subject that I've spoken with Matthew Edgar a lot over the last three, four months. Is it wrestling? It's called range in a tournament or a campaign. 
Range is your top average minus your lowest average. 92. What's your top to bottom range? Keane's range in this tournament is 0 0.08 of a point. That is the smallest I've ever seen over a three game streak. Yeah, it is very consistent, but it is consistent around 92 and a half. Now, that isn't going to be enough against Rob Cross, you would think, in a best of 19 game. 99. It's not going to be enough against Rob Cross at the minute. It's that simple. Oh, he's in the mood again. He's in the mood. And after a bad start to the leg, he gets himself back in it with another maximum. 100. Keane's only had one dart at double so far in this match, but he should get one from this position. That was a point this afternoon when he was playing Josh, where 63. If Josh had the option, he probably would have tapped. Treble 18 for double. Not going to happen. And Rob Cross. 54. Lovely creative use of the board there to get Robbie to 170. 170. 63 points scored. Some players wouldn't even come into their heads to do that. Correct. You've got to be able to use that 25 and ball with the last dart 93. after two correct Keen singles. At worst. That's the approach. As for Keane, double 10 is needed. 46. And that miss could be really crucial. Robbie Cross approaches 4-0 and two breaks of throw and he will fancy this. 18 for tops. Three out of four on the double so far. Game Make that four player. out of five. Rob it is 4-0 and a double break. Fifth leg, it's Rob to throw first. Game on. Might as well stick it on a t-shirt for Rob Cross. Get a chance, take a chance because that's what his game is all about. He's never been noted as the biggest scorer. 43. But if he was to stop playing darts right now, what would be his legacy of how he played the game? You've got the likes of Chisnell who are 100. noted for massive scoring. Dennis Priestley was noted for utilizing the treble 18 a bit more than anybody had ever done. But I think Rob, has a legacy of playing 5 or 1, of making things simple. You talked about how he only uses three scoring segments 2018 19, but his creativity of getting from A to B is just about as good as anybody I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I do really, really like how he uses the board. His practice partner, Scott Williams, he'll be practicing with a lot more actually, having moved up to Lincolnshire. His part of the world in the last couple of weeks does a similar 100. thing he's a little bit more funky with his use of the board you can see some very rob cross like stuff although i don't understand the thinking in some of it some of it seems a bit flashy and show-offy by the way when he moved to lincolnshire did he take his digger with him uh, that's a very good question i'm not sure oh i hope be, not actually. would you be able to move me i'm going from st leonard's in east sussex 86. to lincolnshire what have you got, Mr. Cross? Well, I've got Robbie all these Rikai, things from the house, and I've also got this big bobcat thing. Yes. And he's not going to take the 154. Keen Barry, these chances, such as they are, he needs to take 94. One. Can you require 140? He might need to take this one. Tops. 74. How many times has he wired the double Robbie on those exchange shots? Wired double 16 earlier. And now he might pay the price again. Game shot what word did he use? Remorseless? Six Say it again. He's just not giving anything away look he's not even he's not scoring as well as he has done in his previous two games but when it comes to the back end of legs there is just no mistake sometimes you can't afford any 100 and there aren't any mistakes to be fair 
he hasn't really been afforded much wiggle room because look what Keen Barry, he's had darts to win the last three legs and missed them all, but he's been on finishes in the other two as well. So Keen has been kind of there with him at the back end of legs and Rob Cross has just got it done and moved on and it's 5-0 and it already looks too big a mountain to climb for Keen. I think if it, the shoe had been on the other foot we might have said that what Damon did in the previous match would be possible but the level of play that we've seen from Keane in this tournament is that conducive to bridging a five leg gap like this probably Keen not however he has won a couple of de development tour events recently so you win those tournaments not just by obliterating people you do it by winning in different ways 106 oh, he's hit a double but it's en route to another double maybe it's a sign 139. Well, he better hit this King one. Required 24. He's got three darts. Oh, no, come on. Game oh, what a dart. Play. Great dart, Keen Barry. That was the hardest Six shot the double he's had in the whole match. Reverse. And he wins Game it. One. That's a superb shot from Keen. And he's got his first leg of this contest as Mervyn King gets his first leg against Luke Humphreys, who is currently averaging over 107. There we go. Keen Barry with a second maximum in this match. Levels up that tally. Somebody's lit the fuse. You notice that Keen Barry's got two stars on the back of his shirt. Is that for the JDC and the JDC World Championship and the WDF Youth Championship? So correct, it is. He was looking to win those two and then the PDC World Youth Championship went out in the semi finals in the year that followed those. Could be his year, you never know. Look, he's 21. It's four, four five years ago when Keen Barry was making noise and he was the Luke Littler, he was the Josh Rock, he was the Hian Van Veen. And semi-final of this. Loads of development tours. Those two World Youth titles, or junior titles, if you like. But he's 21. 93. There's so much more to come in the Keen Barry story. 50. Absolutely. What's the next chapter in this story? Double 16. Is that in the way? Is he going over the top? 18. He did get in the way. He didn't like that at all. Keane would love this. Double 14. Double 7 in. And we might have a game on our hands all of a sudden. And where does he want to be at the break from this position? When he was 5-0 down, maybe he thought, oh, I'll take 8-2 down. But now he's thinking, I'll take 6-4. Little 12 darter. 93. To break the throw. Rob Cross had left himself on 50 after just nine darts. 100. Did not win the leg. Sixty. One of the reasons why Keen Barry made the semi finals two years ago is because he figured out his rhythm. He went through the junior system and started in the development system with raw talent. But what he's starting to do over the last 24 months is harness his talent 57. into what is going to be a better arsenal for the long term going forward. Now, isn't it great that we don't have many people left in this tournament at all? And two of them are junior 60. world champions. That speaks volumes for the Junior Darts Corporation and what they're doing with people coming through from very young ages. Yeah. And it's, look, 100. made this point. Uh, the recent Masters, uh, it's the youngest top four in the world we've ever had. It is the top 32 and indeed a whole tour that the average age 55. has come down by a number of years. And a lot of that is down to the opportunities for young players. 
whether that be the development tour, JDC. There, there's always been young Robert players coming into the game. Eric Bristow was a teenage prodigy. But there are more established routes now. This is an established route for a 146. Again, just on the outside wire. Can you require 156? Ian has asked a very big question again, and this time he doesn't have the answer. 56. Robbie required 36. This can get awkward for Rob if he misses outside sometimes. You saw that in the previous leg. Game if he goes straight in, it's not a problem, and he gets the break straight back. And Rob Cross, despite losing back-to-back -back legs, is still very much in charge of this contest. I just want you to keep your eye on something, Dan, a little bit later in this match when Rob has got a shot like that again. I'm not sure if anybody's noticed this, but 100. when Rob approaches the hockey, he does so very patiently. But when he has three darts in hand, he won't eye double 16 140. throughout the process of approach, towing the hockey and actually throwing the dart. He will eye up the middle of the board, then at the last moment when he's at a dress, he will then look at double 16. Well, that, I mean, were you a, were you a player who did that himself? It's about setting yourself. Look, the, the real extreme example would be somebody like Andrew Gilding, who has a sort of Johnny Wilkinson approach to the hockey, where he starts out on the right-hand side, walks forward, turns, walks across to his standing position, then turns his whole body, senses himself, then he looks at his target. Rob Cross is doing that. It's a routine thing, isn't it? Yes, very much so. With me, it was tow the hockey, very much like Ian White does. I would never kick the hockey. I would place my foot down. And then after I was happy with that, my process was to look up and straight at the target I was going for. Whereas Rob doesn't do that. He is an Olympian at kicking the hockey, by the way. With the metal hockey's on the Pro Tour, it's almost like a Rob Cross symphony of his shoe in the hockey. He must spend some money on shoes. I mean, not as much as Michael Smith, but that's for a different reason. Well, it's it's the right side of his right shoe that's going to be worn down after about Can two months. Walking in circles if it gets any worse. Now, 170 for Keane Barry. It's not going to go. But if he can take a big bite out of it, which he 44. has not done, Robbie required he surrendered what little advantage he might have had. Notice that he didn't go for the 17s because he doesn't do that. 95. Can you require 126? Four 19s. Six will do. Sixes would have done. Does he do it here? Robbie required 36. Walk up, center of the board, calibrate, look up. Just like that. Straight in for 7-2. Yeah, the Rob Cross machine is working pretty smoothly. He isn't at the levels we saw earlier on. He's, he's what, let's say six, seven points off his tournament average, which was up around about the 100 mark. But he is bossing this game, and his finishing in this match has been excellent. Seven out of 11. We're not quite in Martin Lukeman territory, but it has been very, very good. One Unfortunately for Keane, his doubles have an only two from ten. Well, he has got the most 180s in this match of these two players now. Yeah, there have been four legs in this game where Keane Barry has had darts at double. He has lost those legs. Now, give him all four of those legs, and he's winning this match. You're not expecting him to be perfect on his doubles. That is Martin Lukeman territory. But... If he just won a couple, this game is basically on throw. If Keane wins this leg, after 10, it will be the same as what's on the main stage because Luke Humphreys is 7-3 up on Mervyn King. 140! To Rob Cross to make sure that doesn't happen. And he is to the finish first. Now, on 1-3-1, one, one, he didn't go 51 99. first, but on this shot, he could go 54 Robbie first. And I think he will. Because now he can go to the 19s. There's four of them. Just like 94. that. Leaves him on top. Oh, Keane wanted tops. Now he needs 10s. That's a great recovery from Keane. 
a key shot for him. Keeps him in the match. And you guessed it, we are going into the break. It's 7-3 again. It's happened every time. And we've had a couple of people who have had that lead and sustained it. But one person did it in the last match. Well, for the fourth time tonight, we have a 7-3 up on the mid-game break. Only Damon Hetter has managed to turn things around from this position. He's just beaten Jan van Veen 10-8. But Rob Cross, who is only averaging 95, I say only, that's compared to what he's averaged so far in the tournament, which is close to 100. He is finishing brilliantly, and Keane Barry, I think, is going to have to rely on Cross starting to miss a few doubles. Keane is a couple of points off his tournament average of 92 and a half. We know that he can comfortably play at this level until the heat death of the universe, but I'm not sure this level is going to be enough against Rob Cross because there's every chance that Cross starts scoring better in this second session of the game, and he could run away with it. He has only lost 10 legs over the course of this tournament, and there is a chance that he might not lose any more in booking his spot in the quarterfinals. Got to give Keane some credit though, that previous leg, that recovery on the 80 checkout. Treble one, found the treble 19, then the double 10. He misses that. His task is even harder, but the recovery has got to be on the score sheet and constantly. Well, if Keane does lose this game, he will still take a bit of a a hit in the rankings because he's defending semi-final money from two years ago but by reaching this stage he has at least preserved his spot in the top 50 in the world and so you would think that he's not going to have any issues in fighting it out for keeping hold of his tour card or anything come the end of the year I'd like to think that Keane's going to have one of those seasons where the European tour is going to be kind to him like it was last year but like you've already mentioned, it's harder to get into those tournaments now. 100. And if you don't, if you have one of those nightmare seasons where you can't get through qualifiers, tumbling down the rankings is going to be easier to do than ever before. 96. Yeah, we'll wait to see what effect those changes have. I mean, it may be that everybody outside there is 64 down they just kind of stagnate a bit because all the money is going to the top 32 top 40 and so while you may not be adding a great deal of ranking money it's not as if the people around you are doing so either but look we'll see it's, it's all going to be very interesting i'm not even sure how the big players are going to react to it they might think i'm in all of them if i want to so i'll skip loads of them yeah, you've got to give these things a season to see what the intricacies are. A bit like the Premier League. 138. Um, first went to tournament style. Seen this number plenty in this game already, but nobody's taken it. Until now. I was being hopeful. So on this board very early. On. Yes. Barton's produced it. Averaged a ton, the Belgium. One of my tips to go deep in this tournament. Lost his first game. Against a very good Brett Claydon, who won these first games at the UK 85. Open this year. Let me give you a nice cushion Robbie to lie your head on 72. here, Dan, because most people fancied Ryan Searle, and he was out yesterday. Yeah, mentioned him as well. <laughs> Double six. Three. There he is, does it again, looks at the middle, then calibrates and looks to the bottom left. I'd love to know why he does that. I'm fascinated by it. I think it's a perfectly sensible play, isn't it? It's, it's about making sure you're set in the same position every time and then Robbie you can choose your target. Absolutely. Game there you go. The That's the corner that got on the world title Top from that 140 shot. He's only two legs away from the quarterfinals of the UK Open again. Final in 2019, quarterfinals in 2018, 2020 and last year as well. He is regularly in the final day in fact in the last what six years it has only been Gabriel Clemens and James Wade who have stopped him from reaching the quarterfinals assuming that he goes and wins this game from 8-3 up against Keane Barry. everybody watching this will understand that Rob Cross loves the UK Open it's had such a great attachment to his story 
but considering how he came to be on the PDC radar, it would be a bit of a travesty if he doesn't win this tournament at some point. 100. For me, this is one of the premier tournaments in PDC darts because it's very much like the Open Championship Golf, the US Open Golf, and of course, the US Open Tennis, where people can win sectional qualifying, they can get themselves into the main draw, and if you keep winning, you can get there. Look at Emma Raducanu. She won the US Open from qualifying. Robbie require 84. Well, 84 was the checkout that he took in the very first leg of this match. So we'll go to the 18s. He got treble 18 for double seven in leg one. But it'll have to be the bullseye this time around. 59. Very close. Can you require that facial expression of Rob tells you that he thought that might have just popped the bottom 1% of that ball. But Keen Barry recovers Game again. My Keen word. Keen Even when he misses dart one, he's pretty good with darts two and three. Such a composed young man, Keen Barry. He always has been from the moment he turned up. Rob Cross doesn't like the lie, so he's switching down the board. 139. I think there's something about these young dart players, you know, they're just built differently now. They play darts with ice in their veins. 140. Jan van Veen, Keen Barry, Luke Littler, and all of the crop of young players that are playing to be who they are right now. I think it kind of feeds into the point you made about the various youth systems. Not, there's always been avenues for young players to get into the game, but they've never been so established. They've never been set up in a way that replicates the formats, 57. the atmospheres that the professional level does. And so they are more ready than they've ever been. Into, I, you know, the JDC even does stuff on interviews, so they're better prepared for doing that side of the game. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And if we may compare our fresh crop of young players now to our first world youth champion in the PDC you can't say that Aaron Monk had ice going through his veins because he had lava going through his veins yeah well like there's, there's always room for Robbie there's always room for radical elements and the mad monk is as radical as they get during quote from the world of darts what happened 97. when you lost that game Aaron Aaron Monk happened. Ah, talking about yourself in the third person. And that's Robbie something that 70. Barry's mate John was to about former world master. But now, Cross is looking for another clinical kill to be within one of Sunday. 30. Another wired shot on the outside of double 16. Keen can't afford to miss dart one here. But he does miss dart two, meaning Cross 62. comes back to double 16 and that ninth leg. Robbie required 32. The finishing has been very good for Rob Cross. He's been missing. He's not been missing by much. And he does not miss at all there. And he is a leg away from the quarterfinals. Looking to get there for the fifth time. 96. In the last seven years. This is testament to how well Rob is playing at this point in time. He's making a 96 average look fairly okay. Because you know there's more. We saw it this afternoon. 99. He is disgusted with some of the darts he's thrown here tonight. But he's still averaging 96. Which is something that Keane has not done in this tournament. Yeah, it looks like we can start reading the last rights for Keen Barry, the 21 year old in this tournament. But it is a creditable run from him to see off Joe Croft on the Riley's qualifiers, then Kim Hybrex. 133. And then Ryan Meikle. The last rights have been issued to Mervyn King, who has lost to the world number one 10 4. 99.93 average there for Humphreys. That'll do. 38. 45% on doubles as well. That will do. He's in the last eight. Keen Barry's not in the bullseye, which is where he needed to be for that shot to have a chance. 
Rob Cross to win it with a 170. Rob, you require 170. He's had it done against him in this tournament. In the final by Nathan Aspinall, 2019. He's not going to wrap this up with a max finish. 98. Keane required 56. Simply put, Keane's got to win 6 0 from here. Double 10. 36. The signs weren't good after that single, only Rob just found the 16. But this is a great chance to end his day's work. Only goes down 16 for double 18. Rob Cross matched art to win it 10 4. Just as he did against Josh Rock this afternoon. He's done it again. It is ruthless from Rob Cross. He sees off Keane Barry. He has still only lost 11 legs in this entire tournament. Excellent finishing from Voltage. And the former European champion, former world champion, former match play champion is still in the hunt for a first UK Open title. He's in the draw for the quarterfinals and the final day tomorrow.